everybody a second to uh, come back into the show. Sorry about this, guys. It It's the hotel Wi-Fi. It just uh, cuts out every 10 minutes or so. I, I do apologize for that. It's very annoying. Um, I'm going to put my phone down real quick to open this thing of YooHoo. There we go. Ah, YooHoo. Just drink it. Yahoo Soda. Just drink it. So, ah, I'm trying to put the cap. Maybe I shouldn't put the cap on because it's so hard to open. Anyway, uh, they model London and uh, they, the outside they have the night bus, which is really cool. But then when you go into King's Cross Station, the people who are taking your tickets are supposed to be muggles, so they don't know anything about wizarding stuff. Daniela had her wand out already, and they, they were in character saying stuff like, oh, like we, for some reason, people around London today keep carrying these sticks around, like, which was their way of addressing the, the wands without breaking the character to reveal that they do, you know, because they're, you know, the ticket takers in King's Cross are not supposed to know what wands are, or at least why, what they're used for or whatever. So um, it's pretty cool the way that they do that and the way that they're, they're in character even that whole time. And you walk through King's Cross. There's a huge, you know, waiting area. You go through these areas. There's all posters for, like, normal muggle things. They're, they actually have the poster from, I believe, the sixth, sixth or seventh movie where it's, um, that, um, it's like a beauty ad and it says, Make a Little Magic. Uh, they have that poster sitting there at the end of the hall which is great, like it's a great touch. And you go up the stairs, right? You go up the stairs and you see platform nine and 10. And now what they do there, it, even if they had, if they just had a sign that said platform nine and three quarters above a door that you go through, I would have been impressed. Because I'd be like, oh great, I'm walking through platform nine and three quarters. But they're never, they never just do the thing that they could do, they do the thing that you never even knew it was possible to do. So what they have is they they basically corral you in such a way that everyone is facing there's like a wall that where you can't see it's hard to explain but like you walk in and you look like in the distance and you see platform 9 and 10 and they have this like projection screen somehow between you and people who are walking up to platform 9 and 10 and it looks like through this projection screen that everyone who's walking, they walk straight through the wall. It looks like they're walking straight through the wall, like platform nine and three quarters. But when you walk into the area, you see that it's just a, a doorway. But like the experience of going into this room and you see all of these people like just running through the wall, exactly like in uh, Harry Potter, it's really, really extremely impressive. I don't even understand how they do it. But it's just another thing that, like, it goes so above and beyond what uh, you would expect someone to do in a theme park like that. Um, so anyway, you go through nine and three quarters, which is great, and you get, like, the Hogwarts Express pulls up, and it's a straight up, it's a real train. It's not like a monorail or, you know, it's, it looks exactly like the Hogwarts Express. You get in it, and they lead you into your own booth, like your own box, uh, like in the movies where it's like, you know, they... they pull the door shut and you're in the seats sitting there inside your own little private box with I think like six people can can fit in there um and it's insane like you even on the area where the doors are you know it's like that white sort of milk glass you can see shadows they like project shadows of people walking by you know as if they're walking through the hallways by and you you can hear like Harry and Ron sometimes like trying to find a, a, a booth to go in, and Hermione will say, no, there's people in there. You can't go in there. Like, it, it's so good. Um, and then through the window of the train, you can actually see, like, the, the English countryside. Like, you see first, like, London as you leave the, um, the station. You're going through there. You, you go through the countryside. You see, like, the, I guess it's like the Malfoy's Manor. Like, it looks all spooky and you see, like, sometimes you'll see, like, Death Eaters, like, flying through the air and stuff, and uh, it's, like, insane. You'll go through the forest, you'll see centaurs or, or minotaurs or whatever. I guess it's centaurs, right? Uh, you know, galloping through the forest and stuff. 
it because because what it is is that you're on this train and it is physically moving between Hogsmeade Station and Diagon Alley, but it uh, it's projecting a like simulated scene um, that's kind of like it's not 3D, but it's it's like curved so that from wherever you're looking at it, it looks correct. It's not just like a flat scene uh and it's all cgi and and the actors from the movies are in it like mad eye moody shows up uh hagrid shows up um harry and ron and and them do show up in the other part um so there's like a lot of you know harry potter movie related stuff and just the entire experience of that is every aspect of it i would have i would have been impressed if it was a monorail that said it was the the hogwarts express you know what i mean like if it was just like a regular monorail but then it had like hogwarts lettering and stuff on it or if you go into a train and it's just a bunch of like benches or something like a regular um train like a subway train or something i would have been impressed like if maybe they had some harry potter advertisements maybe had some wood paneling i would have been impressed by that like the every aspect of that is so impressively done i i really um i couldn't believe it it was the kind of thing where i i look at it usually when i go to an a theme park I try to understand like how they how they actually do it or how they can can manage the crowds to get through you know like you need like high efficiency things where you can get enough people onto a ride and like this one is just like I would never have expected that they could do that um Vin saying did you see a place to buy a Hogwarts letter yeah you can buy a Hogwarts letter you can buy a Hogs uh you can buy a, a London to Hogwarts train ticket as well which is really nice um, they have a lot of merch like that that's like in-universe stuff that you can get, uh, which I really like. I love all the stuff that they sell. I could try to do a tour of one of the, the Harry Potter stores, but honestly, I can never promise that I can do tours from inside of any of the buildings. It, even when we were in California, or um, rather Hollywood Studios, doing that walkthrough, that was kind of um, iffy if we'd be able to actually show it without the stream cutting out, so... I'll always try to do my best with that stuff. I'm going to be at Harry Potter World one more time, but, um, you know, there's no way to know if it's going to let me stream from inside of a store. Um, But I will try. And I'm going to, what I want to do, if you guys are interested, I I want to try and record a video because you can't stream from inside the Hogwarts Express. It's like, you know, a lot of metal and, and, and concrete that's going to stop a stream from actually broadcasting outside. But... Um, I might try to record a first person video just of the entire experience and then I can like narrate over it later. Um, since I do have my laptop here, maybe I can figure out how to plug my laptop in and, and do a stream where I narrate over the video. Um, or if not, then maybe I could just record like some kind of vlog piece about it. But if anybody wants to see what it looks like, um, I could try to record like a video of actually what this experience is because it's so insanely impressive to me. Um, really, really great. Kiki's saying they have a lot of very smart people and very good workers, plus lots of money. Those are all good things to have. But even assuming that, like, because I've been to Disney and I've, I've been to a lot of Universal stuff, uh, you know, here um, in Orlando and in, in, in California, in Tokyo, in Shanghai. And anytime somebody, you know, there, there's a level of, of production value that even goes past that. Like, you know, because being to theme parks like that, you know these are all the most skilled artisans out there and to even go above and beyond that is insane and I think that's what they did with this Harry Potter world thing and uh, every once in a while you see something like that like in Shanghai the Pirates of the Caribbean ride is like the it's like the best thing you've ever seen it blows away the pirates here Um, same kind of thing where there's they're doing stuff that you don't even understand how it's humanly possible how it's possible in the physical world um, and so, yeah, it's, it's always really great to see that kind of stuff, but, uh, let's call this a show for now, guys. Um, we're going to be back with more IRL stuff coming up, more talk show stuff as well. So keep your eyes peeled for more of this stuff. Um, thank you everybody for being a part of the show. Welcome biker, uh, to the show right here at the end. Um, so let's cut it out before my hotel Wi-Fi stops again. I, I do have sort of like natural stop points, I guess, from this hotel Wi-Fi. So thanks everybody for being a part of it. Let's raid someone at the end of the show here. So uh, I'm going to get up and try to get to my laptop because I have my laptop since I'm home. Uh, I can actually just look up someone to raid instead of cutting the stream. So 
If you don't know the channel, it's called The Voice of Nick. I play video games live three times a day, every single day. I don't talk over story or cutscenes, but I do request no gameplay or story spoilers. The thing about this week is that none of that matters because I am live from vacation. So I'm in Orlando, Florida. I'm going live from Disney, from Universal, doing IRL streams, doing talk show streams, doing live readings, all sorts of stuff, guys. So if you want to be uh, joining along for that, make sure you hit that follow button up there. We do have a new follower who I want to give a shout out to, followed before the show started. It is um, Dark Rose Snow. Uh, thank you to Dark Rose Snow. Welcome to the Meatball Marauders, my friend. Everybody say hi to Dark Rose Snow, um, who I forgot to call out at the beginning of the show, but if you are watching, I am calling you out now. So thank you for being a follower. Um, let's check who is playing some stuff right now. We'll try to jump into somebody's uh, stream if possible. Um, ooh, somebody is playing. Is that possible? I guess maybe there's a, a beta right now for Battlefield 5. Um, so let's jump into a couple of our people are playing Battlefield 5 right now. Um, whose name is easier to type? I'm going to say, hold on a second. Uh, so let's jump into a Battlefield 5 stream, guys. Um, if you do like the channel, though, if you want to uh, support the stuff that I do and get a whole bunch of exclusive uh, bonuses and consider subscribing. You'll get the voice of Nick emote, legendary status in the chat and Discord, 200 meatballs, higher chance to win in the heist mini games, and ad-free streams. So if you um, do subscribe, you'll get all that stuff. You'll also know that you're directly helping the show to get better. So thank you to all people who have subscribed. Um, and uh, of course, to everyone who cheers as well on these shows. So I really do appreciate that, guys. Um, so... Let's um let's call our show. I want to shout out everybody who hosted here. Uh, Vin, Chuckster, Awesome Mark, thank you guys uh, for the host. I, I can't really read them out as they happen because they don't really show up in the right way um, when people actually do host, but I can try to read them out at the end. So let's read uh, Lazy Sidekick, who we've rated a little bit before, and we'll try to do that before my hotel Wi-Fi cuts me off again. So if you don't know the deal with... Um, Rating, I actually don't have to cut the stream this time because I can use my laptop to check who's live. Welcome, Chuckster, at the end of the show. We're going to raid somebody playing Battlefield 5, though, so stay tuned. There's going to be some cool stuff coming up. Um, I don't have to cut the stream in order to raid, so let's just uh, jump in there, guys, and uh, check out Lazy Sidekick's uh, Battlefield 5 gameplay. So uh, don't forget to stick around. If the loading bar doesn't show up for the raid, then stick around for like 30 seconds. It'll say it's hosting Lazy Sidekick, and then, of course, you can join um, from that. So... I'll see you guys there. Don't forget to post that Voice of Nick love emo if you got it. Post the raid emo either way. Post the, uh, let them know that you're coming from the Voice of Nick stream and let's all uh, be nice. It's new early days for playing Battlefield 5. I'm sure it's some kind of beta. So uh, nobody's really good at the game yet. <laughs> so let's get ready for that. And I will see you guys on the next one. Bye bye, everybody. Um, I think I do have the capability to actually see when the raid countdown is about to be done. So that's nice. Um, yeah, thank you to everybody who's been a part of these shows. It's it's sort of um, scary to do streams this way where you can't really know that it's all going to work. You can't know that the internet's going to be be okay. So it's, um, it's cool doing these, and thank you, everybody, for being a part of them and, and sticking around for them. Okay, so it looks like it jumped me into the raid, so I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.